Good evening, everyone. Good evening. I hope you guys are ready for tonight. Um, come on in. Come on in. Um, invite your people. Start sharing. We are here. We are here for worship. We are here for Wednesdays in the Word. Welcome, everyone. Good evening. We are so happy that you guys are here to join us. Remember to share. Remember to share this. Remember to start your watch, watch parties. Amen? So everybody Amen. knows that we are here and we are live for Wednesdays in the Word. The Bible says, The earth is the Lord and the fullness thereof, the world and they that dwell therein. Lift up your heads, O ye gates, even lift them up, ye everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. Who is this King of glory? The Lord of hosts. He is the King of glory. Wherever you are, wherever you're sitting or standing, Somebody give God some praise because he is worthy to be praised. Amen. All right, come on, everybody. We don't want to have the spirit of the Lord diminish. We want to start and kick this off with a wonderful prayer. For everyone out there that is watching, that you can come in and join us as we begin our Wednesdays in the Word. Amen. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for this time together that we are joining as a collective body, Lord. Maybe not in person, Lord, but definitely in your spirit, Lord. We thank you for everything that you will do upon this hour, Lord. That we just go a little bit into your word through preaching, through teaching, through song, Lord. Just connecting with everyone out there, Lord, to let them know they are not in this by themselves, Lord. We thank you for everything that you will do through us, Lord. Let those that are here be in perfect peace and in health, Lord, so that we can portray your word to everyone out there, Lord. Let everyone know out there that we are praying for them, that we are thinking about them, and that we have them on our mind, Lord. We thank you for everything that you will do. In Jesus' name we do pray. Amen. Amen. First John chapter 1 and it reads that which was from the beginning which we have heard which we have seen with our eyes which we have looked upon and our hands have handled of the word of life for the life was manifested and we have seen it and bear witness and show unto you that eternal <laughs> life which was with the father and was manifested unto us that which we have seen and heard declare we unto you, that ye also may have fellowship with us. And truly our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. And th these things write we unto you, that your joy may be full. This then is the message which we have heard of him and declare unto you, that God is light and in him is no darkness at all. If we say that we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we lie and do not the truth. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another. And the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive, our, forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar and his word is not in us. I have just read 1 John chapter 1. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading and hearing of his holy word. Amen. 
Amen. How's everybody doing out there? We pray you're doing well. Right now, what we want to do is, you know, if you have any prayer requests or anything that's uh, on your heart that you know you want us to go to God on your behalf, and uh, you go to God also. Go ahead and start typing it in right now. Amen. I, I seen something today where it said God is a online God. Amen. God is everywhere. God is doing everything that he is capable of doing. There's nothing impossible for our God. So go ahead and type those in. Uh, just, just know and believe that when we pray that God is faithful to answer prayers. God is faithful to do his will and do his way. Amen. So we give you a few more seconds just to bring in the prayer requests. Yes, yeah. And uh, make, let's get ready to go to God boldly and humbly, knowing that he's able, more than able, more than capable. We serve an awesome God. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Press Heavenly Father, Lord. First of all, Lord, we thank you, Heavenly Father, Lord, to see another day, Lord. So many, Lord, by the thousands, Lord, are not waking up, Lord, to see another day, Heavenly Father, Lord, but they're losing their lives, Heavenly Father, Lord, to this virus. So, Lord, we have to say thank you, Lord. We need to say thank you, Lord. I know I'm thankful, Heavenly Father, Lord, that I can wake up this morning, Lord, and put my two feet on a solid ground, Heavenly Father. I'm thankful that I can wake up this morning. And, 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 and have a roof over my head, Lord. We're thankful, Lord, and we praise you, Lord, for all that you're doing for us, Lord Jesus. We ask you, Lord, that you will forgive us for our sins, Lord. We confess those things to you, Heavenly Father, Lord, that was not, that, that was against your will, Heavenly Father, Lord. And we want to repent, Heavenly Father, Lord. We want to repent, Lord, not to do those things again, Heavenly Father, Lord. Now, Lord, we ask you, Lord, to be with those workers, Lord, who are on the front lines, Heavenly yeah, Father, yeah. Lord. Everyone in the hospital, Lord, not just nurses and doctors, Lord, but everyone in the hospital, them and Father, Lord, all, all, all of our, uh, all of our um, police officers, Lord, our, 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 our firemen, Lord, uh, seen, seen a, a dump truck today, them and Father, Lord, them picking up trash, Lord Jesus. We just ask you, Lord, to be with those ones, Lord, that are still working, them and Father, Lord, people who have, who have to still make deliveries, Lord. We ask you, Lord, that your blood would just protect them, Lord. Yeah. That you will cover them, gentlemen, Father, Lord, from whatever thing is out there, Lord Jesus. Lord, and we just ask you, Lord, to still keep us, gentlemen, Father, Lord, not just from the corona, gentlemen, Father, Lord, but also yeah. from sin, gentlemen, Father, Lord. Uh, the ones that are at home, Lord, daily, Lord, where their, their minds can be idle, Lord Jesus. But we know, Lord, sin, Lord, will cause death, gentlemen, Father, Lord. If we, if we continue to do it, Lord. So we ask you, Lord, to take us from those idle minds, Lord. We ask you that our minds will be put on you, Lord, daily, Heavenly Father, Lord. That we will be renewing our mind daily, Heavenly Father, Lord. That we will not conform to the things of this world, Lord. That we will not start bad habits, Heavenly Father, Lord Jesus. But we will continue to, to lean on you, Lord, for all that we need, Lord. Continue to touch our youth, Lord Jesus. Yeah. For, Lord, uh, I know they're struggling, Heavenly Father, Lord. That some can't comprehend, Lord Jesus, why... They can't go outside or why they can't go to school, them and Father, Lord. Why they have to be in the house, them and Father. So we ask you, Lord, to cover them, Lord. We ask you, Lord Jesus, that uh, that they're getting good good, uh, uh, good teaching, them and Father, Lord, Please. from uh, their parents, Lord, from their God guardians. Who's ever watching them, Lord Jesus. We pray, Lord, no harm is coming to our children, Lord Jesus. We pray, them and Father, Lord, that you would touch these marriages, them and Father, Lord, uh, who have to change a little bit, Heavenly Father, Lord, and have to spend more time, Lord, and if you're not used to it, Lord Jesus, we pray, Lord, that you will be with those marriages, Lord. We pray, Lord, that violence will cease, Lord. We pray, Heavenly Father, Lord, that uh, uh, killings will cease, Heavenly Father, Lord. We pray, Lord, people will be obedient, Lord, to our, what our government is saying, Lord, if it's not putting them in harm's way, Lord Jesus. Help us to be safer, Lord. Help us to be smarter and wiser, Lord Jesus. Help us not to put too much, Lord, put too much, Lord, on these workers, Lord Jesus. They don't need any more anybody else coming to the hospital, Lord, and getting sick out of disobedience to me, Father. So we ask you, Lord, to touch us, Lord. Help us to be smart, Lord. Help us to be wise, Heavenly Father. Lord. We ask you that you use us and use us in, in, in the way, Lord Jesus, where it will make you yeah. proud, Lord. Use us in a way, dear Heavenly Father, Lord, where it will, it will show somebody else who we are as Christians, Lord. And they'll say, what must I do to be saved, Lord Jesus? Oh, Lord, I, I know the devil yeah. probably, not nobody will get saved in this time, Lord Jesus. But we pray, Lord, even in the time of destruction, Lord, even in the time of sickness, Lord, even in the time of illness, Heavenly Father, Lord, that the thousands, Lord, that the millions, Lord, will not be fearful, Lord, but they will give their life to you today, Heavenly Father, Lord. Oh, Lord, we know it's craziness right now, 
Lord Jesus. But Lord, you are the one, Lord, who calmed the boat, Lord Jesus. Hey! You are the one who calmed the boat in the midst of the storm. Lord, you are the one, my Father, who healed the blind, Lord, and uh, made the blind to see, made, made the lame to walk, then, my Father, Lord. So we know, Lord Jesus, that even in the midst of this, Lord, somebody's going to give their life to Christ. Hey! Another soul will be saved, Lord. Heaven will be rejoicing, then, my Father. So we ask you, Lord, to continue to use us, Lord, in a mighty way, Lord. Help us not to sleep, Lord. Help us not to sleep on what you're doing, Lord Jesus. I know it's crazy that's going around us, Lord, but help us to see, Lord, what you're doing, Lord. Help us to look at the positive, Lord, in the midst of the negative, Lord Jesus. We, Lord, we praise you. We give you all the glory, Lord, and all the honor, Lord. We bless you, Lord, and bless our pastor as he brings a good teaching today, Lord. I pray, Lord, people's ears are open and ready to receive what you have. We praise you, Lord. We give you the glory and all the honor. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Come on, we can to have praise and worship. Where are you out there? Are you ready to have praise and worship? We are saved, sanctified, and we are sanitized. So where you are, lift up the name of Jesus. Come on, praise you. Come on up. Come on up. Come on up, y'all. Come on up. We're ready to praise him today. We come to lift him up today. Where you are, give God the praise today. Brother Josh is going to lead us. Praise him going to come. We just going to rejoice in the Lord. Come on. Lift up your voice to heaven where you are.
Tonight, we are very thankful for what you are doing and the goodness that God has put in each and every one of us, that we may love him in troubling times, that we may even thrive in troubling times. I'm thankful for all of you who are giving and doing uh, through our uh, digital giving, Givelify, we thank God for that. Uh, also, uh, mailing in in uh, 3452 First Avenue in Urban Crest, Ohio, zip code is 43123. Street address is again is 3452 First Avenue, Irving Crest, Ohio, 43123. Again, our digital giving was Givelify. You're just being a blessing, making sure that they get here, sending it by others. Many modes are uh, sending it in, many ways of sending it in, and we're just thankful 
uh, for what you're doing and staying connected. Union Knights, everybody stay connected as a church family, stay connected with Christ, stay connected with each other. We just thank God. Let me know if you can hear me out here. Let me know if you can hear me. We want to make sure. We want to make sure that we are all on the same page and testing, testing. Then we'll make sure that we are doing. I'm gonna switch our mics. So bear with me. Them powerful singers killed the mic. They killed the mic. Them powerful singers. I think this one here, we won't mention Sister Ashley's name. I believe that's the mic she had. That is much better. That is much better. We are working together to the glory of God. We want to stay healthy. Go home to our families. We appreciate our families who are really supporting us. Uh, supporting us. I think we're good, Reverend. Let me turn this one off. And we'll see. Let's see if we have any more problems. We're good, I think. We should be all right. All right. We still got an echo? All right, Reverend David, do your thing. The director. Boy, y'all pray for us. What a director we got. My goodness. Brother Richard. Spike Lee, Director McDaniel, boy, yeah. mean director too, boy, a mean director, I'm yeah. telling y'all, y'all don't know what pastor is going through behind the scene, all of the hand signals and gestures and faces that I'm getting, amen, but I'm thankful that folk care, amen, and the job that they are doing. Reverend Joshua, boy, what a praise and worship tonight, our wonderful minister of music here, and then Reverend uh, David prayed his heart, youth pastor here, and then Sister Ashley and Brother McDaniel just lifted up with the voices that God has blessed them with and just blessed us to be a praise. And then with the technology, the information, and just the wonderful, beautiful thing that God has given them in gifts, talent, education, experience, they don't mind using it all for the glory of God. Amen? Amen. We should use it all. To the glory of God. Turn with me to First John, the first chapter. Scripture the sister Ashley read earlier. Dynamic of manufactorial administrative assistant. There is none better. Thank God for her. Amen. And we know the Lord and Brother McDaniels, the dean. Amen. And our superintendent, Sister Clark Union. Our Sunday school books are in. So get with the dean and superintendent on how we can get them to you. Um, okay, leaders, so uh, make sure that we know the Lord will truly bless what God has. We started this walk um, in the epistle of John last week, the first Wednesday that we began to look at this first John, this epistle. We know that in epistle, how do we spell epistle, everybody? Those are here, a couple of us is here. Belly, isn't it? Epistle. Did I spell it right? Let me know out there. Epistle, that is an instructionary letter. That's an instructionary letter. So now we know that the author of this, and many know this through church history, that it was the Apostle John, the writer of the Gospel of John, his epistle, and then Revelation, the Revelator, John, the Revelator, who appeared now, Jesus' revelation to what is to come, and we know that the church is taken care of. So, don't be the, so down on this hard, difficult season. Um, remember that God has always promised to take care of his people, his church. So we're looking at this epistle of 1 John, this instructionary letter, and we're going to walk through this text together and just see what God has. So last week we dealt with the first half of this, the first so four verses of this, this epistle. Again, 1 John. First John, the first chapter. And we see in this text where it says that that which from the beginning which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, which we looked upon with our hands, had handled of the word of life. Uh, now we're dealing with what the, um, the author. Now many look at this as an elder speaking to uh, younger folk, younger adults, younger people, maybe younger Christian, newer Christians. And this elder, that's what some question, is this really John who wrote this or his comrade, his um, uh, fellow believer, uh, uh, worker, excuse me, of the gospel who wrote this. But we see that this appears to be an elder 
from a more mature person in God who's, who's testifying and witnessing and sharing the things of God. And he starts out with that God is eternal, that God is eternal. There was, never was, there was, never was, there never was that God wasn't. There never was that God wasn't. Before there was, there was God. We have seen with our eyes, the disciples have seen with our eyes and looked upon our hands had handled. We've seen that imagery of doubting Thomas when Jesus told him to touch the imprint of his hand, the piercing of his side. And then it talks about the manifestation of the word. The manifestation of the word is the word of life. That life brings you, that the word of God, excuse me, brings you life. And that Jesus, it says in John 1 1, is that manifestation of the word. And that Jesus is divine, his divinity. Being here, he's God since before it was. And he is a manifestation of the word of God for life was manifested and we have seen it. Ah, they have seen Jesus. They have seen and have bear witness. They have witness. We have received, we the church, received Jesus into our hearts. We are identified with Jesus through his resurrection, his saving grace. We're going to talk about uh, that a little bit in a minute here. And then they bear witness as the church is to do the day. The church should be bearing witness. We are to be witnessing, witnessing, witnessing our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, Amen. witnessing our relationship with Jesus Christ, our experience, and that requires us to be walking with Christ. And we're going to be talking about that as well. For life was manifested, we have seen it. We bear witness to show you that eternal life which was with the Father, it was manifested unto us. See the manifestation of Jesus. Here we have Jesus, meaning he who saved, Messiah, the anointed one, Christ, the anointed one, God with us. We are blessed to have that and know that Jesus loved us so that he thought it not robbery to make himself a little, come on, Psalm number eight, to make himself a little lower than the angel, to walk with us, to talk with us, to show himself, and to endure our guilt. Right there, that shout, church. He endured our guilt. Our sin. One who not knew darkness. We talked about light and darkness. We're going to talk about it more tonight. Darkness. There, there we see the, the, uh, the presence of chaos. Evil. And God is not dark. He's perfect. He's beautiful. Perfect. Brightness. His light. His goodness. We're going to talk about that. Goes on verse 3 that says, That which we have seen and we heard, we declare it. As the author said, I'm declaring it to you. I'm teaching it to you. We ought to declare it. We ought to declare the good news. We participate in each other's spiritual growth and our discipling. We are to disciple each other. God gives us gifts for the edification. Here we get that word to edify, to edify, edification, to edify, which means to build up, to build up, okay, to build up. Can okay, we hear me all right out there? Everything good? Amen. How, hey, everybody don't know. Do I look all right tonight? Just let, it, let my wife know if I look all right. See, I got directed to say stay focused. I'm stay focused. I'm stay focused. Where my tank top, my Holy Ghost tank top next Wednesday. Stay with me now. So we truly, we have fellowship. And then it ends with this thing about we got fellowship. Amen. Oh, we got fellowship. Jesus said, I'm the way, the truth, John 14, the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes unto the Father but by Jesus in that, in that coming, in that living, in that dying, in that resurrection, in that party, in that grace of God and salvation, that if we believe we have fellowship with Jesus. We'll talk about that fellowship. And these things, they said, we write unto you. Why are they writing this? Why are they talking about the eternity of God that never changes? Why are they writing about that we can have fellowship with God through Jesus and how the word, the Logos, was manifest. Why are they writing this? That you and I may have joy. I got to raise some here. Come on. That we can have joy. Why? Why are they writing this? It tells you right there in, in verse 4. In verse 4. Joy. Joy. My gosh, joy. My young kids, I miss them. I miss them singing. Joy, joy, joy. Our young people declaring the goodness of God, that God declares and brings to us, as the author says, that your joy may be full. So here's the question. When it says that your joy may be full, I think and look at this as I'm studying the word, that tells me that then, if we're not careful, come on, come on. our joy could be running on empty. 
<laughs> Our joy can be running on empty. We live in a time in a, in a, in a, that, is, that questions our faith. Let me ask this question to get started on the last five, six, seven, eight, nine, and tenth verse. And it talks about the light of God and declaring that God is light in him, no darkness at all. We say that we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness. We lie and do not the truth. But if we walk in the light as he is the light, we have fellowship with one another. And the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses, cleanses us from all sin. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus is faithful. And just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from our unrighteousness. If we say we have not sinned, we make God a liar and his word is not in us. So this is what I want to ask you tonight. In this thing that it says that our joy may be full. Here's a question for you to ponder briefly. That's uh, a deep question. Is God mean? Is God me? Think about that for a moment. I'm going to give you a second. I'm going to get my water bottle over there. Think about that for a second. Take some notes. I pray you got a little pen and paper out. Click them on your phone or your iPad or your laptop. As you watch this, is God me? Woo, what a question. What a suggestion. Is your God, is my God, the eternal God, me? I mean, with all that's going on, they taking down basketball rims, closed rec center, closed schools, limited daycare, businesses have to shut down, Folk are isolated. Folk getting in trouble for trying to gather. Is God mean? Wow. Is God evil? Is God dark? Uh, you may be asking yourself. You know when you're challenged, don't forget you got an adversary. Every believer is answering, no, my God is not me. But the world is questioning, you may be questioning, where is God? These seem to be dark times, evil times, chaotic times. Where's God? Well, our theology tells us that God is not evil, that God is not mean, that God is not dark. As the scripture said, God is light. God is goodness. God is love. God is truth. So the answer to that is, I hope y'all can read it, is no. God is goodness. He is love. God is light. But humanity and that adversary, they can be mean. We can be mean. We can be evil. We can walk in darkness. Why? Because we have freedom. Sin is coming to the world, and we have freedom. We are free to respond. We are free to walk with God, or we're free to walk from God. Which way you walk? Are you walking to God? Are you walking from God? Mm. And he's trying time, trouble and time, your faith is tested, the water looks empty. Tomorrow looks bleak. You're caught inside. Going through trouble and tribulation. Every time you turn TV on, they talk about death and dying. We become suspect of one another. As far as we concern in public, everybody got disease. <laughs> We're masked up. <laughs> gloved up. Yes, we don't even want to say hello. We want to stay healthy. We want to live. Right. Have mercy. God is goodness as he is. God is love as he is. Yes, he is. God is like what is going on. Humanity, sin. 
our free will, our freedom to walk to God or walk from God. Now, what a beautiful time in the midst of this troubling time. To connect the deeper relationship with God. He talked about it in the first four verses, didn't he? A fellowship with God. Fellowship with God. Have mercy, Jesus. So then we ask these three critical points. We deal with salvation. Let me give you one theological term. No, my God is not mean. Your God is not mean. God is not mean. He created us for relationship. Mm -hmm. Fellowship. So the first thing I say is that that's how does God put us in a state that he can have fellowship with us. you got to understand, it's got to be on God's terms, not our terms. Have mercy, Jesus. So when we get the first word, we get this word here, we get salvation. We get salvation. That name, Jesus, Yahshua, Hebrew, Yahshua, he who saved that name, that theological name. The study of salvation is... And don't forgive me, I should know how to spell this by now. It's soteriology. Let's see if I can do it without looking again. The study of salvation. The doctrine, study, the teaching of salvation. That clearing message to everybody, repent and believe. To repent, to turn away from. You remember why I said we can walk with God? We can walk with God, or we can walk from God. So in other words, am I going to walk in the light? Uh, the perfection illuminating, the perfecting of who God is, his goodness, his greatness, his creativeness, all powerful, his life, his word, the breath, the ruach, the breath, the logos, the manifestation of that word, Yahshua, Jesus. Am I walking with him in the light? Or am I choosing the freedom to walk in darkness and sin and disobey God? Or am I willing to repent and believe? And thus, salvation delivers me from bondage, brings me, or rescues me from death, purchased me, and brought me into freedom, loosens my shackles, Loosen the stain of the grave and the payoff of sin, death. And through Jesus, uh, we talked about it last Sunday, didn't we? Through Jesus, we talked about a good Friday. Through Jesus and the shedding of that blood, we find reconciliation. We find redemption. We find ourselves restored to the way God intended us to be. See, God don't fool with dark stuff. He brings light to dark. So that's the question. As we walk in this tonight, which way are you walking? Are you walking to God and with God, or are you walking away from Him? Now, let me, here we go. Here's the warning now. You got more time on your hands than you ever had than trying to be busy. Watch it. Don't think that adversary ain't watching. And when you find yourself, Dipping into darkness, into chaos, into sin and ugliness and evilness. That devil's watching, perching, ready to send imps after you to entice you to go deeper in your darkness. Mm. Psalm 125 said, we are like Mount Zion that shall not but be removed but abided forever. At least we touch our hand back into iniquity. What you watching? What you streaming? Uh-huh, uh-huh. What you allow to go between your eyes and your ears. Are we using this time of isolation to draw closer to God? Do we have a biblical plan? Do we have a growth plan right now? Are we in that word, in that word? It's time, well, time said we never get time to pray like we want and fast like we want. I don't know about y'all for a minute that I was eating like I had no sin. I had to run to the park and start walking and start watching what I was doing. That devil is a tempter. He sees your weaknesses. And then that comes to the next thing about sanctification. 
about holy living, sanctification. Let me get that up here. Uh-oh, uh-oh, another word I got to spell, saint. I put the N before the C? Yes. Yes, I do. Sanctification. Uh, I after that before the C? Sanctification, I think it is. Amen. T-I-F-I-C-A-T-I-O-N. Holy, holiness, holy living, we can only do that by really a couple ways. The fact that when Jesus ascended to the right hand of the Father, we're in that 40 day period after he rose right now, we're walking and showing himself, but in this 40 day period, at the end of that 40 day, he's going to ascend to the right hand of the Father. He told the church to wait 10 days after that, the 50th day from his resurrection, we're going to be celebrating Pentecost. When the Holy Spirit comes to his believers, to the church, and dwell within his believers, now we got power to walk holy. We got power to resist sin. That dwells within every believer. We're covered in the blood. Now it's a daily fight. Right. Can I help you? Yep. It's a daily fight. I'm almost at to be done now because I'm going to end. We've been ending at 745. This is deep. So I'm going to have to end with sanctification. Is Here's that call now. Now that you're saved, now that you repented and believed that Jesus Christ is the risen Savior, He is God. And the only way to the Father is through Jesus. And Jesus and the Father are one. There's one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God that is above all and in all. Whoever calls upon the name of Jesus shall be saved. Don't sit there with your head down to breath, fretting all the time. Don't let that devil go. He goes where the first place you try to go. In your mind to dictate your tongue and your actions. Rebuke him. It's a daily fight. Get in your word. It's a daily fight. Mm -hmm. Get on your knees and pray. Get in a prayer posture and pray to God. It's a daily fight. Resist something. It's a daily fight. Sacrifice. And watch God do it. Stay connected. Stay not only connected with your church family. I thank God for technology. I'm thanking him in this season. Boy, if it wasn't for technology right now, thank God for technology. Use it for the advancement of the kingdom. Use it to the glory of God. Use it for your spiritual growth. Amen. Find yourself watching and looking at stuff. That devil is licking his chops. <laughs> so this is a message we have heard in verse 5 of him. And declare it unto you that God is light. In him is no darkness at all. And that's an indicator for yourself. When you find yourself viewing, watching, listening, thinking, feeling, speaking, things that you know are dark, not of God, that are sinful. What a time to repent. What a time to call on God. Recognize it and fight back. Don't let that negative thought, that depressing thought germinate in your spirit and in your mind. Resist that devil and he shall flee. So I enjoy 1 John, these epistles of John, is they really lay a blueprint for Christian living in a secular society, a post maternity world where egoism and Iism, the pounding of the chest, is magnified, exalted, and lucrative. Crazy we act before we want to get paid. Mm. But I found out I don't want to go to hell healthy. I don't want to go to hell wealthy. Wow. Whatever God, I take all the blessings God will give me. Right. But first of all, the biggest blessing is I'm saved. Amen. Amen. Filled with the Holy Spirit. Striving, hear that word now, striving, it matters. Striving, it matters every day. In my frailty, in my humanity, in my weakness, when I sin, I cry out to God for forgiveness. But I ask him if I don't know if I sin, time that I might have. I call to God, I bow my head and humble myself. Lord, have mercy on me. That same cry can go out for you every day. For peace in the midst of these storms. For protection. 
glove up, mask up, but don't forget to pray up. Amen. That's all I got for you today. I'm going to end on time. But I want you to know Jesus loves you. So I'm going to pray a blessing upon you and just bless you with a benediction. And we'll pick up and don't forget now, Reverend David, Brother Joshua, they can study in this as well. They're going to get a son on Wednesday and teach and give old pastor a break because y'all making my hair lay down tonight. I'm sweating from the top of my head to the tip of my toes. But all to the glory of God. I thank God for you. We love you. But most of all, God loves you. Don't allow anxiety to set up shock within you. Trust in the Lord and do good. Call upon his name. Stay in his word. And encourage yourself with positivity. And soak yourself in his scriptures. And keep calling on him. He never gets tired. Mm. Where you are, I saw a prayer request for the Jacksons and the Baileys. And any more prayer requests, we're praying for you, knowing the love of Jesus will wash upon you. But also, I'm encouraging and challenging you to pray and to share the good news of our Savior Jesus Christ safely. Be a wise worshiper. Take advantage of this technology. Call somebody and share the goodness of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Where you are, will you join with me in prayer now? Now, will you pray for this team here? Yes, 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 yes. Hey, God is using them. Pray that devil don't like what they're doing. So pray for their covering, their healing, their protection, their prosperity. Pray. To you, all wise God. All wise God. Your glory and your majesty. Your dominion is unlimited. And your power is unlimited. Mm. Your grace is unbelievable. And your mercy so kind and generous. I pray now for everyone that's hearing my voice right now. That you will watch over them if they need healing, healing, protection. And God, I have to say that even beyond this disease, there's other things that have us sick. So I need you, dear Heavenly Father. I need your healing hand to move, watch over. I want you to watch over Cindy and David. I want you to watch over Joshua and Richard and this, lift them up and Ashley and families and others and our deacons and trustees and our ministry leaders and deaconess and all who are laboring so hard like Cliff and James and Bonnie, dear Heavenly Father, and I left them. Dear Heavenly Father, I'm just praying for all who've been so faithful and caring wherever they are to be wise, worship, at least that. Dear Heavenly Father, I'm praying for our family that in the midst of all of this are suffering loss and yet can't get to their loved ones, yet can't have a, a homegoing service, mm. a time of restoring and renewing and supporting each other. So I'm just praying for peace and Dear Heavenly Father, and I'm just praying, oh Dear Heavenly Father, I'm praying. Praying for my mentor, Dr. Akins, and his family. Lord, I'm just praying for them. In the midst of sorrow and bereavement, I'm praying for them. Keep them strong, dear Heavenly Father. Lift up Pastor Emeritus Perriman and his Sister Perriman, God, and Dr. Gilead and Sister Gilead as well, dear Heavenly Father. Their, their, their support of this ministry and church and myself and church family and family is unmeasurable. Yes. Thank you, God. Now bless us, Lord. Heal us, protect us, keep us from hurt, harm, or danger. To God be the glory. Because God, you're able to do exceedingly abundantly. Above all we ask your name. By the power that worketh in us. In Jesus' name we pray. Let the church say amen. 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 We go live Sunday at 11 a.m. Tell the world I think I'm wearing skinny jeans on Sunday. I think I'll put my skinny jeans on Sunday. I'll see you Sunday at 11 a.m. God bless you.